And uh, sadly, um, C++ requires threads. That's what my lightning talks about. Not directly, but kind of indirectly. And I work on bare metal, so I'm gonna like retitle this talk, C++ requires threads, God damn it. Or maybe more like this one. Uh, Yeah, so 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 the the real problem here is uh, function local statics. Right? Uh, before C plus plus eleven, the C plus plus standard didn't know what threads were, so this was fine. Um, and as of C plus plus eleven, uh, function local statics are guaranteed to be initialized once, and upon the first call to this function. And depending on what your threading model is, that means there's a lock around it, or that means it's kind of unimplementable, right? Because if I have a uh, you know a normal round robin scheduler, fine, lock it, we're good, right? If I'm on some kind of fiber thing, then it's not really a problem because I have some sort of cooperative scheduling. If I'm on a preemptive run to completion kernel, as in I have uh, preempting interrupt service routines or something, then the compiler can't like magically from the inside make sure that no one uh, interrupts the initialization of uh, S, right? So if I have some uh, 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 call to foo, first call to foo, and while I'm initializing S, then some interrupt fires right in the middle and wants to initialize S as well. Well, what do you do? Right, like you can't like yield back to the other thread because you're on its stack, right? Uh, you can't initialize S because the other guy already started. You can't use S because it's not fully initialized yet, right? So, so this kind of sucks. Um, ideally, you would you know synchronize around S from the outside by turning off interrupts or whatever, but the compiler doesn't know how to do that, and you know that's kind of in 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 user land. Right, so uh, you know, if 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 uh, if only like uh, S was maybe initialized at startup, and then I'll deal with it, right? Because you know, if if if, if I compile this on like a normal compiler uh, for you know ARM Cortex or something then it'll give me a bunch of errors because it doesn't have locking implemented for that platform, right? So, so I can't even compile this. Um, so if I want like, you know, a, a, a static within a struct, well, that'll be initialized at startup and do the right thing, except that's basically as good as a global, right? And I also have to put it somewhere, right? You know, it, it, you know if, I, if I have a, a uh, class with a static daemon member, the compiler is not smart enough to uh, um, know where to put it. So in some translation unit, you have to uh, define it and not just declare it. Like up here, it's declared. Down there, it's defined. And so you have to make sure that goes in one single translation unit and blah, 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 and it's a pain in the, yeah. Um, so uh, you can use this kind of the same way. The problem is uh, that Everyone can use it, and you have to put it in some translation unit. So what's what's the what's the solution? Obviously, templates, right? Uh, <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so if I if I make my my uh, my thing class a template, then I have to make this forward declaration down here. Uh, this one, I have to make this a template. And then suddenly the compiler is smart enough to just put it in the program, so I can put that in the in the header because templates are somehow smarter. I don't know why the logic is that way, but uh, that's how it works. So now I got rid of that one problem. The problem is it's it's still as good as a global variable, right? Because other people outside of F can just say you know thing t, we're good, right? Uh, so how do we fix that? Well, more templates, obviously, right? I mean, duh. Uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so if I add an extra template parameter to thing, right, and, and then just pass in 
a, a, a local uh, uh, a local um, class. Nobody else can 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 access my magic tag class because it's in F, right? You can you can declare classes within functions. Like I I didn't know about this very much. Or, yeah, uh, but yeah. So so you can you can put uh, you can put fun, uh, class declaration in the class uh, in the function, and then nobody else has this magic tag type. So they can't get at it. So now it's local again, right? But, but, but you know, for for some reason, uh, not everyone likes templates, right? Uh, uh, so 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 we have to like lie to them. So uh, so so we <laughs> so we make a macro called static plus plus. Right, because it's the better static. Uh, <laughs> so now I can use this macro to define like an int variable called my thing, right? And then I can use my thing, right? Because it's you know it's a reference to that static in that class that's and no one else can find it, right? If I if I have a if I have another one, okay, look, this 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 is the exact same thing just in a different function, but it still works because. That's a different my thing. That's the my thing in G and not the my thing in F. Like in its mangled name, there's also like the function that it's in, right? So, so this is a way to get around it and to get to the, to the success baby rather than the bomb, right? And we all like the success baby. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was my lightning talk about how templates solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.